All right, what is growing on? So I am in front of one of these fields that Jim just got done scything. Actually, the area I'm walking through now was scythed a few days ago. He just turned this, and we're gonna go over and check out this baler that he's developed, built, and he's actually baling his own hay. So really exciting video, I think. Stay tuned. Getting ready to go over the other part of the farm here and show you this thing. I have seen pictures on Facebook before we got up here, but I have not seen this thing operating in person. So hold tight. What are we doing over here? Uh, turning the hay. Turning the hay? Yeah, this kind of, this is a little older than I usually, I'll mow it until the dew's off, let the field dry, then turn what I just mowed. This, I didn't get to, so. But look at, this has been sitting here two days, and look how green it is still underneath. It bleaches on the top, but green underneath, but a little drier. Um, you know, most of the old time haymakers, what they would have done is took this windrow and spread it. But what I found is that I still can't get it done in a day. And if I keep it in the windrow, you'll see how easy it is to pick up when I go. So I can just like go along and pick up the whole windrow. So if I keep it like this, I can do that. And it only takes a day longer. And the haze almost seems better because it, the whole bunch doesn't get bleached, just the top gets bleached. You know, I'm trying to still figure it out. But, Jim, that's um, a custom fork. I mean, can you even buy those things anymore? No, they just don't make them. So a hay fork, what you want is something to let the hay slide off. That's why there's only three prongs. Um, and then this cup so that when you push along the ground to pick up the windrow, it's coming up out of the ground instead of digging in. And then the handles are so much nicer. These are all antique store finds but they're usable wonderful tools so the pro tip there is uh, hit your local antique store yep usually they're hanging on the wall same thing with that buck rake that's the antique store but yeah this will be ready to bale tomorrow now i can see how the rows you did this morning are still green they look like what you're flipping almost yeah but the thing is with the dew it was wet when i mowed it so just by flipping it you know i should do that but we're going to bale some hay so i ain't going to worry about it but I like how you can see how it kind of knits it together when it drops it in the windrow so it moves as one piece, especially longer ones. I can almost stand it on end. Uh, this is a little shorter than what we'll be bailing. But you know, it's come down here, you know, I mow two hours in the morning, spend 20 minutes flipping it, maybe flip it one more time for 20 minutes and then bail it and that'll take another couple hours. So. I mean, but it's something that puts me in control of my garden feed and the animal feed, which is pretty nice. Are you not wait, relying on the local farm store? No, and I don't mind relying on local farmers, but the thing is they're all relying on this, you know, way of doing things that's so tied to machinery. And that whole pandemic has really showed me how a supply chain can be, how fragile it is. You know, the trucks stop running. I mean, they can't even build cars because they don't got the chips, I guess. And all these new tractors all got chips, I bet. I guess that's why the oldies but the goodies are so uh, sought after, huh? Well, that's the thing. Those, yeah, they could all be fixed with, um, you know, any of the metal parts you could remanufacture by a blacksmith, you know. But I guess the, you know, the big deal would be to go back to horsepower. And that buddy, or that new friend of mine, Willie, that's what his plan is. He's got the BCS for now, but he's hoping to do horses with a sickle bar. It's ground driven. Uh, and then some kind of a, a solar powered machine that makes small round bales. Okay. All right. Bale time? Bale time. Whoa. Cool, huh? Now this is where you come in with that other rake after? Well, what I'll do is um, bring the machine down to the hay now and then I'll be able to push all these windrows up to the machine. But I found it was easy. I mean, it's kind of bumpy with all the ruts here, so I found it was easy to do that. But I just like how you can push that much hay, you know, with just a hay fork. 
a little and, manpower. And this has grown up a little right after you mow it. It, um, it moves no easier. At all. I could see the old ruts you were talking about. Oh yeah. Wow, this is a wet field. Oops. Now we're getting into the taller grass, so it won't push. But, you know, this has been sitting here three days and it's still pretty green underneath. That gives me a workout. That's harder than scything? Yeah, definitely. Oh, so here's the machine. That's the machine. We say machine. I mean, Jim, when I think about, hey, I think about, you know, this $100,000 setup, this big expensive tractor, this baler. Um, this didn't require a hundred thousand bucks, did it? No, I probably got maybe 200 in materials in it. I bought some good wheels. I bought lumber that was smooth on one side. You wouldn't believe it, but the hay when it's dry is really slippery. So it slides in and out on the smooth surface of the wood, so the smooth is inside. And all it is is a, a box that you load with hay. and then compress with a ram. So this, it takes a while. I guess if you're here by yourself, you said maybe about 10 minutes of bale? 10 to 15, depends on how tuned I am to it. And how many bales have you done this year? Oh, like 75. Just well, 75? Whole, well, this whole field is in the barn. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I have to get a couple of shots of that when we get back. And you know, I modified how I do it. I do two compressions. Because I want it really tight. Can you fit one of these rows in the baler? Um, I wasn't able to, but they're getting shorter as I got down here. Um, so yeah, it's amazing how much will go into it. You know, you don't think that that little bale holds so much hay, but... Are you typically cutting all of this stuff before it goes to seed, Jim? Nope. So we're getting seed in here too. Yeah, especially the, the early crop, you get a lot of dandelion seed. But I mean, we can, we'll show you in the garden how as long as the sun isn't exposed in the soil, it's not an issue in the garden. As long as you keep a crop on, I mean, a, a layer of hay on it so no sunlight hits the ground. The first compression, okay, so I just, it's a lever and the ram drives it, it squeezes it out. Okay, and I back it off. The Russians back. didn't do that. And then open the door again. Was this your own modification to the yep. design, Jim? Yep. Okay. Open the door again and push it all the way back against the ram. And then fill it again and then ram it. And okay. then fill it again and ram it and then I'll, I'll probably have to steal some of that hay. Have you weighed one of these bales? Any idea what they're coming in at? No, we should do that. You want to put one on your produce scale when we get back? Produce scale won't be heavy enough. <laughs> we can just do a, a regular one. A human scale? Yeah. So this is it. This is your main source of nutrition for the garden. Yeah, it's my own. Well, yeah. Well, you know, I've been doing the goat stuff and making new beds, feed mulching. And so for everybody watching in Florida, we're using the compost, broken down mulch from the city, and in Maine, we're using the grass. Yep. And again, grass is a, a big, broad spectrum. I mean, there is all kinds of clover and little leaves, so it's not just grass. It's more diverse than just grass. What do you mean? You're not using selective herbicides to keep all these different weeds out of here, Jim? No, we like them. This is uh, all beyond organic, right? Wow, I just stuffed that whole bit in there. It's gone, huh? I, I think I'll get, be able to get enough. You know, a lot of people wouldn't want hand work, but I mean, I don't mind it. I'm doing everything else by hand. Because this hand stuffing the Russians didn't do either, but I want the bale really tight so it holds together. So they would just do one press and be done with it? Yep. And like I said, they had a, a needle that will thread it like I'll show you what I'm going to do. But I like this closure that kind of locks it. The guy had this and I found those at Tractor Supply, so it kind of sucks it in. 
So this just keeps the ram from going all the way back when I stuff it in. So I have some maneuvering to get it going some with the leverage. Yeah, I didn't make that much difference. I still get most of that back in. Well, you're not messing around. You really stuffed that thing, Jim. Yeah, it really makes the bales tighter. This hay is a little wet still with the uh, um, dew, but I'm amazed at how it allows me to leave some pretty green stuff. Really, so you didn't compression have that before. it. Yeah, yeah. So you know, compress it from here to there, and then I back it off, open the door, shove it in about three or four inches, and I thread the. See, the Russians use the thing with this all closed and shoved the needle through and you had to thread it but I saw I could just open the door thread it around thread it around right there now you said you've tried some different strings and this is the one you had to go this with this is true baling twine yeah true baling twine uh, everything else broke so that's the top um, string now I'll do the bottom string same thing on the back. Something I might make a different design because I have to thread it behind this upright for the wheel. That might have been a mistake. It ain't that big a deal. And then I don't cut that one. Try to keep the twine kind of in the center of the bale because sometimes it slides to the outside when I close it. Lock it up again. Same thing here. Pretty good. Compress it again. Leave it compressed. And then tie it off. So again, I have to thread it behind this upright for the wheel, which is kind of a pain sometimes. Maybe you could put like a little, uh, I guess a tube. You'd a still tube, I thought it about it. I think that would work. So I think there's things to change on it. Mm. But most of the time it goes easy, but if there's hay right there, it becomes a little pain in the ass. And I want to make sure it kind of moves. And then I cut it. Just tie a, I don't know what that's called, a loop like that. And then thread that through. And you can still, if you crank too tight, you can break this twine too. You can. Yeah, but I mean, you really got to crank on it. So then I just tie a, a loop here. So hopefully you'll be able to use these again because they'll be the right length. Oh, reuse you Just the pull twine. that instead of cutting it. And then this. The typical hay bales are just cutting them. Right. And the same thing, tie a loop in the top one. press it out, put like a spacer in. The Russians use some kind of T thing. This seems to work pretty good for me. So that'll just push it out. It's definitely not as dry. I can feel more friction with it. And then... Oh, so when it's moist, it doesn't come out as easy? Yeah. I mean, it's, when it's dry, it's really slippery. So it'll probably not come out as this is easy. Yeah, it's coming out. Right? Ooh. But, ta -ta. Whoa. I mean, and it's movable and stackable and... Got hay? Got hay. Nice. Yeah, I mean, that is self-sufficiency for a farmer because with animals, that is always the thing that, you know, having hay for them. But you still got to have storage.
Jim, the human hay baler. Yeah. Jim, I think people are probably starting to get the impression you like hard work. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Not scared, huh? Nope. One nope. other thing I learned, because I was talking to Aaron from Tide Mill, he was saying in wet fields, one of the big problems is when you're moving the hay around and you drive across it, I can't remember if it's the tedder or one of the machines, and you got wet ground, you push it down into the moisture and make it wetter. So I was finding the same thing here on the wet ground. I'd be kneeling on the hay, hey, I'm stuffing in. So I started putting this down, now you have a problem anymore. You got another pro tip? Yeah, if you got a wet field. I mean, it was standing water three days ago. All right. Grab that boy. Oh, the, the presser? So Jim, there was no plans for this or anything online. You just went by a standard hay bale and kind of came up with your measurements? Well, the guy online talked about his um, throw on the ram and then the size of the box. So I kind of used his, but I ended up shortening the throw. And it's out, I think it's a 36 by 13 bale. And I think the other ones are 36 by 14. Okay. Because I think my measurements, how I put this together, that should have been Anyway, it was an inch off how I figured it. So it's a little bigger than you wanted or smaller? It's smaller. Jim, so, the human hay baler. Yep. So this is the first compression, which I probably could get away with, but they'd be much looser bales. I guess with just hand tying the twine, it makes it a little easier when they're tighter, huh? Yeah. And then I kind of found that if I stuff bottom and top, because oftentimes the first bales I was doing would have one awkward, it'd be like one was shorter because there wasn't as much on the one end as the top. So if I stuff it evenly top and bottom, the strings are more square when it finishes. Just little tips if anybody's interested. And try to get it really full because you got the lever action of uh, the big long two by four that will let it compress. And this is the one that I'm so glad I had this part sticking up because I use that to really start the gives you that leverage. Yeah, this one's really That's gonna be a good bail. That's a nice tight one, huh? Yeah. Again, just push far enough so you can thread the twine. Cut the twine. I wonder if you even just cut a slit out you know, in the wood, if it give you like a, a place that you can slide that through. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what this is, two board slit. Yeah. Oh, you mean here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they'd make it easier, you're right. Okay. Caught in. I think 
think it's because the hay is a little damp. There we go. Because otherwise it won't tighten up good. Jimmy, you definitely did this one in under five minutes. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. I'm all yeah, I mean, me. especially if I had somebody else getting the hay to me, because that's yeah. half the, you know, yeah. getting it so it's close. When Alexander and I were doing it, it was a lot easier that way. And there was a little more in each windrow too. But you can see I'm cranking on it because I want it as tight as I can for when it lets go. And I'm also trying to keep the string as low in our, you know, close to the center that this slot will allow me. Because if it's up here, it's often sliding off the side. After you've done 100, you kind of get to know what works and what doesn't. Oh, I bet. like the human hay baler. Boom. There you go. That's a day's worth of feed for the goats. In 10 minutes. Yeah. Not Plus bad. I had to cut it and got to haul it. But Woo. Now I can show you the bull rake. So the more hay you leave in the field is it going to be in the way when you make your next cut like if i get a third cut off this so if you saw those little things it would make it um, harder to mow plus you're wasting hay and this i don't know how this works and doesn't get stuck but it's an amazing design it's called the bull rig this is another antique store find right yep. well actually some scyther some, guy i know somebody brought it back from south maine said i never used this somebody said they use it when they do hay fields do you want it and i said sure Oh, so that was a gift yeah from another scyther right but i've seen them at antique stores but somehow it just hops along the ground and you kind of keep it upright and it just picks up all the stray hay that's a one pass machine huh yeah sometimes again it's wet um, Because when I was mowing up there, it was like really low. Because this has already grown up again. It's hard to believe how much it's grown in three days. That's three days of growth. Yeah, it's up like two oh. inches. So that makes a difference on how much friction there is here. So you really got to move fast or it gets harder. Yeah. And sometimes you just totally lose it. Because I got, it's got so, there's a big rut over there. Do you see that? And I thought that was intentional. No, I can't get back there because i started mowing that backfield and then we got all the rain and so there's like i don't know like 10 windrows back there that you know the grass grew this much i flipped it once but i don't think i'll get it wow but. all right you guys know i'm always picking on those grass holes but this is the type of grass i can stand behind growing and using it makes a little bit more sense so this grass this is kind of okay this is cool the typical mow your yard to look pretty um, like a king doesn't really fly for me at least All right, so Jim the human hay baler. Talk about farm strong. I love the new contraption design. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Most importantly, get over here, hit the subscribe, and get out there and pound some dirt.